additional consideration, as far as size is concerned, is that of obstacles on the approach. Approaching over a low fence or hedge, for instance, is not a problem. But to replace that low boundary with a line of trees, and it effectively reduces the available size of the field. In this field, for example, our field is effectively longer if we make an approach from left to right across the low fence than it would be if we approached over the trees. Making an approach over an obstacle will reduce the size of the field by up to eight times the height of the obstacle. That's as steep as you can practically make an approach with air brake. Take a typical mature oak tree of say 100 foot. If we were to make an approach over this tree, the first 800 feet of our field would be unusable. We simply cannot descend the glider steeply enough to be able to use this part of the landing area. The field effectively becomes 800 feet shorter for our purposes. It is, of course, important to be aware of the wind direction throughout your flight. You will learn that knowing the wind direction will prove very useful when trying to assess where to look for lift relative to the ground when you get low, for instance. It will also dictate strategy on each leg of your task when the wind plays a significant factor. It is, of course, vital that you make a correct assessment of the wind strength and direction before a field landing. Many a potential easy field landing has turned into a disaster because the pilot did not properly assess the wind. When it comes to the actual landing, of course, we should approach into wind, if at all possible, or rather as much into wind as possible. A certain amount of crosswind is acceptable. The amount depends upon the wind strength and the available length of the field. An obvious way of effectively increasing the available landing distance is by choose choosing an approach such that we would land across the diagonal of the field, accepting less of a headwind. In strong winds this might prove tricky, but then, on these occasions, the wind is probably strong enough so as not to require this extra distance. There are usually many indications of the wind direction. In this picture we can clearly see smoke. It may be a factory chimney or power station or a fire somewhere. Usually we can see smoke somewhere during the flight and that should be enough to update our perception of the wind direction. We might pick up the wind direction from the drift present whilst climbing in a thermal or the cloud shadow movement across the ground. Remember however that anything that shows the wind at flying height, cloud shadow or thermal drift for example, will not show the true wind on the ground. Generally the wind at the ground level can be 30 to 40 degrees back, that's anti-clockwise from the wind at height, but it gives a good reference. We can also identify the wind direction, and to a certain extent its strength, from the ripples it makes in a corn crop, principally barley. We can see a distinct wave caused by the wind, and this is a very good indication of the direction on a strong wind day. But only, of course, if the crop is long, and therefore only later in the season. So, if at all possible, we would plan to land into the winds. That way we can accept a slightly shorter field. Or to put it another way, we effectively make the field longer by landing into the wind. As we said previously, a degree of crosswind is acceptable, but that depends on the size of the field and the wind strength and direction. In some circumstances, it may be necessary to accept a crosswind in order to give a better approach over obstructions. It's a question of degree. Before leaving the subject of size, it should be said that the biggest is not necessarily the best. We are not looking for the largest field around, we are looking for the most suitable, and one criteria is size, which must be adequate. But it need not be the biggest. In general, large fields tend to be used for crop production. It's more cost effective for the farmer to work one large field than several smaller ones. Consequently, when the crop has grown beyond a certain length, that field becomes unsuitable for landing until it is harvested. An available size can very much depend on the season.